Hello, this is part 14 of our comparative Bible study on the beginning of Jesus' Galilean ministry. During this part, we would like to wrap up our discussion on Jesus healing the leper, and then move on to the next part in the Gospel of Luke and the Gospel of Mark, which is Jesus healing a man with palsy. Overall, this is our 54th New Testament Bible study. During the last Bible study, we discussed three different accounts of Jesus healing a leper. At the end of the last Bible study, I pointed out how Jesus in all three Gospels charged the man with offering what Moses commanded. During that Bible study, we discussed some of the Old Testament Mosaic Law requirements for cleansing a person who had had leprosy. And I basically proposed the question, could it be that Jesus directed that the Old Testament Mosaic Law continue to be followed at that time because Jesus had not yet been to the cross. And I offer these potentially relevant Bible verses. Holding those thoughts, let's transition into today's Bible study. In addition to directing the person to still follow the Law of Moses, Jesus also directed that person to do something else pretty interesting. Jesus told the person he had just healed not to tell any man or to say nothing to any man. This would not be the only time that Jesus would make this particular charge. Here is a sampling of some additional verses where Jesus did similarly. For example, when Jesus healed a deaf man with a speech impediment and restored sight to blind men and brought back to life a girl who had died, he charged them not to tell anyone. He also charged unclean spirits with not making him known and directed his disciples to tell no man that he was Jesus the Christ. Also, when Jesus' physical presence was temporarily transfigured before Peter, James, and John, he told them, tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. So isn't it interesting that at least this last charge appears to be temporary? because some of these other charges have also been temporary. Remembering the brief review that we did of the last Bible study, could this be another example of things being one way before the cross and another way after the cross, namely after Jesus was risen again from the dead? For example, after Jesus was raised again from the dead, it appears he gave them other charges. Because when Jesus was with his disciples after he was risen from the dead, he didn't tell them any longer to remain silent, but instead told them to witness unto me, preach, teach. These are things that appear to be the opposite of tell no man. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. Ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. So for Jesus to say, to tell no man so many times, could this also have been because Jesus had not yet been crucified and resurrected at that time? I don't know. I've been curious about this for quite some time. I'm just suggesting this for consideration. All this being said, in contrast to Jesus telling people not to tell, there is at least one example of Jesus telling someone to tell what God had done for them. Recorded in the Gospels, there's an event where a man had numerous devils inside of him, and Jesus freed him of those devils. Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thine own house, and shew how great things God hath done unto thee. Lord willing. I'd like to discuss this event and other times when Jesus sent his disciples out preaching during future Bible studies. Moving back to the main text. So as we've been discussing, Jesus told the leper whom he had just healed not to tell any man. Let's see what happened next, as recorded in the Gospels of Mark and Luke. The account in the Gospel of Matthew does not appear to have this information. Picking up in Mark chapter 1, we read, But he went out and began to publish it much, and to blaze abroad the matter, insomuch that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, 
but was without in desert places, and they came to him from every quarter. So here it appears the man did not keep it quiet. He went out and began to publish it much and to blaze abroad the matter. The Gospel of Luke does not note what the man did specifically, but does go on to state, But so much the more went there a fame abroad of him, and great multitudes came together to hear, and to be healed by him of their infirmities. And he withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed. So both the Gospels of Mark and Luke appear to indicate that the fame of what Jesus had done had spread abroad. And people came to Jesus. The Gospel of Luke indicates both to hear and to be healed. Then following that, the Gospel of Luke indicates that Jesus withdrew himself into the wilderness and prayed, whereas the Gospel of Mark states that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, but was without in desert places. Both are similar with respect to Jesus moving out to desert places or the wilderness. Next, I'd like to discuss what city it was that Jesus could no more openly enter into. To do so, I think it would be helpful to begin discussing a little bit the next event recorded in both the Gospels of Mark and Luke, which appears to be Jesus healing a man with palsy in the city of Capernaum. In recent Bible studies, we've primarily been following along with the Gospel of Luke, trying to work in accounts from other Gospels as appropriate. The Gospels of Mark and Luke have been matching up very well together, apparently covering many of the same events, even in the same order. So in our current Bible study, in the case where Jesus had just healed this man with leprosy, it seems likely that the event in Mark and Luke are the same event. So when the Gospel of Mark states that Jesus could no more openly enter into the city, this appears to be the same city referenced in the Gospel of Luke as a certain city. It appears various commentaries have different opinions on which city this is. Some theorize that it was near the city of Capernaum due to the account in Matthew chapter 8 verses 2 through 4. In the very next verse after Jesus heals the leper in that section, in verse 5, we read, and when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, so it appears from the Gospel of Matthew that Jesus left from healing the leper to go into Capernaum. But I've seen where some have theorized that the Gospel of Matthew is arranged more by topic and not necessarily always chronological. In fact, the next event discussed in both the Gospels of Mark and Luke is Jesus healing a man with palsy. Whereas a comparable event of Jesus healing a man with palsy in the Gospel of Matthew is not until Matthew chapter 9, a chapter after the one discussed here. All that being said, it appears to me that the result could still be the same, because the Gospel of Mark also notes Jesus is entering into Capernaum days after. Mark chapter 1 verse 45 is the last verse in this section of Jesus healing the leper. It's also the last verse in that chapter. The very next verse states, And again he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. Although if we were only to read the Gospel of Mark alone, it may appear that Capernaum is that city. But it also seems possible that the city that Jesus could no more openly enter into is a city other than Capernaum. Maybe that's why the Gospel of Luke simply referred to it as a certain city. So in summary, maybe Jesus healed the leper in an unspecified city, which resulted in him no more being able to openly enter into that city once people found out about it. Then Jesus, at some later point, went to Capernaum where he healed the man with palsy. As usual, I'm only presenting this as an option. As mentioned earlier, the account of Jesus healing a man with palsy in the Gospel of Matthew is in chapter 9, which begins with, And he entered into a ship and passed over and came into his own city. Let's stop here for now. Lord willing, I'd like to discuss the possibility of own city here being Capernaum in a future Bible study. If I get to share anything good, it's a blessing from God. Goodbye.